Um, well, thank you. Today, uh, I'm going to be talking about packaging uh, dialogues tools. And I want to start out by talking about building a tree fort. And if you were going to build a tree fort, you might buy or, or better yet, borrow a hammer. And you'd buy some standard dimensional lumber. Oh, screen share. I keep, this is a, uh, hang on. Thank you. The problem is that Zoom is on the same screen as my PowerPoint presentation. Is that better? Can people see? No. Okay, so we're going to start about talking about building a tree fort. And is it's, it's still not sharing. Brian, we can see your screen just fine. Okay, because it doesn't have the green border around it. Oh, this is this is bizarre. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so building a tree fort. So you're gonna buy, or better yet, borrow a hammer, and you're gonna buy some dimensional lumber. And you're going to buy some standard fasteners like nails and bolts and things. And then you're gonna buy or borrow a ladder, and then you'll build your tree fort. And now I wanna talk about building a tree fort the old APL way. The first thing you're going to do is start digging in the ground for some iron ore. And then you're going to smelt that iron ore to fashion your own hammer and nails and saw. And then you'll use the saw you've just fashioned to cut down a tree and fashion your own lumber. And it won't be standard sized because it's, um, un un unless you're really uh, talented with a saw. And then you'll build your own ladder. And finally, you'll build the tree fort. And so I, I was thinking about this, and, and especially if you've been an APLR for any length of time, I, I ask how many of us have written at least one set of utilities to do things like manipulate character data or work with dates or manage data on file? And I, the answer probably if, if, if we were all together, I'd see a lot of hands raised. And so my question is why? And in my case, um, I, I think we can, I can attribute it to a number of things. One is ignorance. Uh, I didn't know that there were other uh, packages out there or utilities out there to do the things that I was writing myself. Another thing is ego, because I think I can probably write things uh, better than other people. And I think uh, the APL community is not, is not at all short on, on egotists. Um, and finally, um, it, it might just be something completely subjective like I didn't like the way um, somebody else named or capitalized their utility library. So we're not, we're not sharing each other's uh, code. And so today I wanna to talk about packages and I would like to talk about package management and finally uh, dialogues commitment. It's interesting because uh, Rodrigo and I did not uh, coordinate our presentations at all, but it seems we have the same uh, graphic in both of our uh, in both of our presentations, and apparently mine's a little bit newer than his because his had 213, 337,213 projects, and when I took my screenshot, it was 215. So, as Rodrigo said, there's you know if there's if you can envision it, there's probably a Py or a Python package to do it, and so. A package is a tool. And so in APL, it could be a namespace, a class, a function, or some collection of those things, uh, plus some non-APL assets like uh, HTML files or shared libraries, DLLs, and, and that type of thing. And so uh, candidates for packages in APL would include things like Jarvis and HTTP command, uh, possibly some, set of subset, some subset of functions in the defense workspace, uh, the dialog cryptographic library, and we've got some others that we're considering for putting in the pipeline. And when we talk about package management, one of the things I wanna talk about today is a, um, a thing called Tata. And one of the curious things about uh, when, when we're trying to develop tools and utilities in APL is coming up with a name. And so uh, there were various names that were proposed for this. Um, but uh, Tatan was a uh, was the one that was chosen, and because it's a delicious way to package APLs or uh, apples. So, and uh, Tatan was designed over a two-year period by Gilgamesh and Paul 
and Morton and Kai. Uh, Gil prototype uh, did the original prototype and then the current implementation is mostly uh, done by Kai. And then uh, Devon Church has been an active beta tester and I've been using Tatan uh, pretty intensely for the past uh, couple of weeks. And so I wanna talk about how, how we envision using it at Dialog. You can take a look at Tatan.dev and that is a Tatan server. Uh, and we'll go and take a look at that in a little bit. Um, but Tatan supports both package consumers, the people who are going to use packages in their applications and package developers. So those of us who write tools, uh, APL tools for a living uh, can develop packages and, and share them via Tatan. And today we're gonna to talk mostly about package consumption. Um, the, um, uh, so let's go right into the demo. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I see a, a question from Paul Mansour that, dis that disclaims that he had nothing to do with the development or design of Tatan. And all I can say is that uh, uh, Kai gave you that credit um, uh, when, I, when I asked how I should uh, attribute um, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, development of and, 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 the, and the conception of uh, Tatan. So, um, so at least Kai is under the impression that you helped Paul and thank you. Um, so today we're gonna to create an application that uses three packages. Uh, one is Jarvis, which is a web server, a web service server from Dialog and HTTP command, which is a utility that we use to process and service HTTP requests um, uh, from Dialog. And then a files and DIRS utility package that does uh, file manipulation, does cross-platform file manipulation. And it's a package from, a, from APL team, which is uh, Kai's company. And files and DIRS depends on pack, a couple of packages, APL tree utils two and OS. And OS itself also depends on package APL tree utils two. So we've got some dependencies uh, working here. So let's, um go to the demo. All right, so first thing we're going to do is look at um, Tatan.dev. So this is the Tatan uh, main server and you can do things like look at all the packages uh, that are in, in Tatan and you'll see that there's a, a group name, APL team, uh, a package name and then some versioning information uh, for each one of those. Um, but one of the things that I, I really want to point out is the documentation center, because if you're going to use Tatan, this is a terrific resource. And it's, um, uh, although a lot of things here are labeled as draft, uh, they are sufficient to get you going. And of course, Kai is continuing to work on, on the documentation. So, um, all right, so then um, I also wanted to show you the repository for Tatan. If you want to use Tatan, you need to install the client. Uh, and if you want to um, run your own Tatan server, there's also a server package. So if you go to releases, um, you'll see here that you can download the client and download the server. And uh, it's a really simple process to go ahead and install those. Um, if I look at my uh, documents and look for my user commands, uh, basically you just unzip the, uh, the client package and you install this Tatan directory and the Tatan uh, uh, script into your my u commands folder. And that's all you need to do to run the, um, to run the client. When IPL starts, it will load the Tatan client into Quad C and it will be available for your use. Okay, so I always like to start out demos with a clear workspace to show that there's nothing up my sleeve. And if we look at um, the directory of my, the MyU commands thing, you can see that we've got the Tatan folder and the Tatan uh, script. And if I look at the Tatan user command, you'll see that there are a number of 
uh, of user commands here. And of course, they all uh, follow the standard user command um, rule. So I can list the registries that, I'm, uh, that I've registered with Teton here. But of course, with user commands, you can always put a dash question mark at the end and get documentation. And if you add question marks, you'll get uh, more levels, more details of uh, more levels of detail in the documentation. So if we look at, um, let me go run this again. So you can see I've got three Teton registries and a registry is basically just someplace that hosts Teton packages. So there's one that's uh, Teton.dev, which I showed you earlier. There's a test Teton server, um, which is a test.teton.dev. And you'll notice that these are both URLs, but I've also got a local Teton registry that's just file-based here. So there's no server involved in, in accessing the packages that I've got on my local drive here. And uh, you might wanna do that if you're primarily for your own use as you're developing packages, because this way you don't have to worry about uh, running a process that runs the server and opening a port and, and all those kinds of things. So if I, um, the other thing is that the, while there's a user command interface, all of the Teton functions are available um, as, as APL functions, so you can embed them in code. So here I can just list the registries and I get essentially the same information, but in this case returned as an array, uh, as opposed to um, output from a user command. If I list the packages on the Teton server, oh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is that you'll notice that there's this alias um, column. And this is a shorthand that you can use to refer to um, a particular registry. You can provide the, uh, the entire URI or file path, uh, but that's kind of a pain. So if you just use the alias inside of uh, brackets, uh, you, can, you can use that as a shorthand. And you can see here that on the Teton registry itself, the, the primary one, uh, Kai has produced uh, quite a number of packages. And uh, I, I wanna say that uh, ever since I started using Dialog APL, uh, which is probably 15 or more years ago, uh, I've been a, a real fan of the work that Kai has done and the utility packages uh, that he's produced. And the fact that he's made them uh, available as packages uh, on Teton is, is really terrific. So, now I can also list the packages that are on Teton test. And here you can see that uh, Davin has uploaded a few of his uh, packages and you'll notice that we've got a couple of dialog packages here, one for HTTP command and one for Jarvis. Um, now, one of the things with the test server is that uh, it's stated that occasionally they will refresh its data. So this may disappear. So this is really something that I'm using you know, for experimental purposes and, uh, and, and to play with. And eventually once I'm happy with where I've got the package, uh, I will go ahead and publish it on the, the Teton pack, uh, uh, server, Teton.dev server itself. And then also I can list the packages that I've got in my local repository. Um, and if you look here, um, the, uh, I've also got my dialog, my HTTP command and my Jarvis packages here. And this, uh, so my, my way of migrating this is I do development locally um, and until it, to where I get HTTP command or Jarvis to the point where I, I, I feel like publishing it in a more public forum. And then I went ahead and I published it on the Teton test server. If you add a uh, no aggregate uh, argument to the um, to the uh, to the uh, list packages command, you'll notice that here I've got uh, dialog HTTP command. These are pre-release versions. Um, you can note things as a beta or a, or a pre-release version uh, in the uh, in the name that you assign it. Basically, if you follow the version number with a hyphen, it's gonna treat that as a beta package. And so you'll notice that I've got Jarvis 1.9.0 and HTTP command 4.0.0. And these are both pre-release. If I list the packages on, the details of the packages on 
my local server, you'll notice that I've got actually got two Jarvises here. I actually found a, a heaven forbid, a, a, a glitch in, in Jarvis, which I wound up correcting for this demo. And so I've now got locally, I've got a version 1.9.1 1. uh, in addition to my 1.9.0. Now, one of the things that uh, the Titan uh, uh, registry will do is it will preserve every historical um, uh, it, it will it will preserve every historical version uh, that gets published to it. And this is so that if there's ever any code that depends on a, a particular version of a particular package, it's still there and you still have access to it. So however you can set up um, uh, on, on servers, Teton servers that you run, uh, you can set up um, you know, your deletion strategy as to whether you can allow packages to be deleted or only beta packages to be deleted and, and so on. So, oh, okay, we did that. Okay, so this is all of the different versions of um, on the Titan server and we've done that. And so here I'm going to load the package HD3 command, and it's going to scan uh, the registries. And one of the things that um, uh, you should notice is that there was a priority column here on my registries. And this basically dictates the search order that it's going to look in for a particular package. Now, in this case, I'm just searching for a package called HTTP command. And um, so it first looks in Tatan.dev, the primary Tatan server, didn't find it there. It did find it under uh, on the test uh, Tatan server. And so it installs it. And uh, if I look at um, my objects, you'll see the HTTP command is here. And there's also a Tatan namespace. Uh, if I look at HTTP command, it's not actually my HTTP command. It's a redirection to a structure that Tatan is managing uh, that points to that particular version of HTT, HTTP command. But it still works uh, just like I expect HTTP command to. So there we just grab the homepage of dialogue.com. So I'm also gonna load uh, package files and DIRs and I'm just gonna find it out on the main Tatan uh, server. And it's now looking at the dependencies and it's going ahead and loading uh, the OS and the, um, uh, and the uh, APL, uh, APL tree utils to namespaces. But again, if I look at it here, you don't see those, right? It's all managed under the covers. So all I see is files and dirs, which is what I, which is what I loaded. If I said, okay, I want to use, I want to have direct use of APL tree utils too as well, I could load that as a primary package and it would show up where I'm loading it. Um, and so, um, that's not what I wanted. So now I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to install the, um, okay, so there are two things here. One is, uh, loading a package, which basically just brings it into your workspace so that you can play with it. And then there's installing a package, which is, at, which is you're going to give it the package name and a place to install it. And in this case, I'm building an application and it happens to reside in the folder dialogue 21 apps, my app. And I've created a packages uh, folder. So it's now going to install that package, uh, the HTTP command package in there. Um, Similarly, I'm going to go ahead and install the Jarvis, the 1.9.1 1, 1 pre-release version of Jarvis, because I want to pick up the newest version. Um, and so it's going to find that in my local one. And then finally, I'm going to install uh, the files and DIRS package. And... Okay, so it's gone and got those. So now if we look over in my um, 
in my dialogue 21 um, apps, uh, my app, um, and then I look in the packages folder, you'll see it's, it's established uh, all of the uh, folders for each of the packages. And then it's also got a build list and, and a list of dependencies. And Tatan uses this for, um, for determining what to load into your workspace when you either um, uh, load the dependencies or if you want to dynamically um, uh, load them. Uh, okay, back to APL. So now let's take a look at my application, um, which is here. Um, apps, my app. Uh, EBA, by the way, is my emergency backup app. Uh, in case for some reason uh, the Tatan server wasn't available, uh, I've got a copy, a full copy of the um, app uh, back here now. Um, but my the the code for my application, and this is a Jarvis application, uh, exists in the my code folder, and it's really just got four functions. Um, the first is run, which um, basically just creates a new instance of a Jarvis server, assigns its port, says where is it going to serve uh, it, it, uh, its functions from. I'm going to say okay, ignore any functions that begin with a uh, an underbar because those are those aren't endpoints, and then I'm going to start the server. And then the so data dir and run are both begin with an underscore, so they're not going to be treated as endpoints in my service. But I've got alert details and weather alerts, which in this case, weather alerts goes out and it uses um, HTTP command to uh, grab some uh, a list of weather alerts for a given state. And then it checks to make sure that the, the command worked properly. It extracts some data from it. And then it basically is just gonna return a count of the alerts, but it's also gonna save the details of the alert data to a, to a file. And again, this, this is kind of a made up uh, uh, application just to demonstrate uh, using, using packages uh, from various sources and with dependencies. So, and then alert details, um, basically just retrieves, if you save the data on file, it retrieves the, the data from file and formats it, and then uh, stuffs it into the response for the, um, uh, for the, uh, re the request, and we'll see what that looks like. So in theory, if I go back to my APL session now, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and clear the workspace again. Again, nothing up my sleeve, and so let's build our app. Um, so I'm going to um, uh, so I'm going to import uh, my code using link. Uh, so I'm going to import my application code. And so I've got I haven't gotten got anything in the root. It's all in code lo in, in the code location namespace. And now I'm going to load the dependencies that Tatan uh, created. So it's now established all the references. And so if I look at my OBS now, you'll see that I've got code location, which is where my application code is, the files and DIRS utility, uh, HTTP command, and Jarvis. And at this point, I can you know, use whatever method I want to publish my, uh, my work. I can just save it as a workspace. Uh, I can, uh, you know, if I said with SID slash uh, dialogue 21 apps, uh, my app, um, my app uh, and save it. And then I could set a quad LX to be code location dot un under bar run and it would just run, but we'll just go ahead and run it now. Um, and so now it started uh, a, J a Jarvis server on port 8088 or 8080, yeah, 88. And Jarvis comes with a, um, a built-in, uh, a really rudimentary HTML interface. And so it, here it lists my endpoints, basically the functions that, that I can run uh, that I've exposed. And you'll see that I've got alert details and weather alerts. And then you can enter some JSON data. So if I enter New York and I send that, it's gonna say, okay, there's one weather alert uh, for New York. 
And if I want to go ahead and get the details, I can send that. And it's going to say in Tompkins, New York, there's a, some sort of a flood warning uh, in effect. So this, this is live data from the, um, the National Weather Service. Uh, if we wanted to look at, oh, California is a pretty big state and they've got lots of weather issues. Um, and I go ahead and so they've got four weather alerts. And if I want to get the details on that, um, there's some uh, winter weather advisories and wind advisories at, in various places in California. So we've, you know, we've, uh, we've built a running service in, in just a couple minutes um, with a number of packages. And um, so again, you can set your quad elects to be actually as code location dot run. Um, and then um, save it and yeah, okay. I think that's, oh yeah, so then I could, I could load it and show it running, but that's okay. So that's the end of the demo. So let's recap. Um, so first of all, we, you can use load package to load a package into your workspace and that will load any dependencies along with the package that you request. Uh, you can say install package, and that's basically going to save a package to file. Uh, so you would you would use that, uh, you know, to uh, to build your your application um, library or your application folder structure. And then when you uh, want to build your workspace or or run run the code, you can load dependencies, and that's going to load the saved packages uh, again with any dependencies. And one of the questions is you could use uh, Tatan to dynamically load uh, packages. And um, this is really up to you, whether you want to preload things and save it in your workspace or, when you, or whether you want to have everything driven off a of file. Or also if the, if the source for a, um, for a package is, you, you could actually use load package in your application and pull packages from a, you know, Tatan servers out there um, I always question whether it's wise to do that because of potential network issues. Um, but, you know, that's really up to you. And then you uh, add your code and uh, deploy however it best makes sense. You could deploy it as a, you know, as a zip file with uh, 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 code folders that, that get loaded as Morton has shown. You can uh, obviously save it as a workspace and, and so on. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is semantic versioning because I've been really atrocious historically at doing versioning. The, um, uh, and so I, I typically when I think that I've done a lot of work, I'll bump the major version number, but really um, uh, a semantic versioning means you have to exercise some discipline, which means that, um, the fourth, you know, the last number is just bumped when there's no change in behavior. Um, the minor version is bumped when functionality is added, but everything will run syntactically the same way. And the major number is, is bumped when there's, a, there's an, act, an actual change in functionality. Um, and uh, so, and also the other thing to note is that for upgrade purposes, when the, there's a major version change, it's treated as a different package. So foo, uh, version 1.0.0 is a different package than foo version 2.0.0. So things that Tatan is and isn't, it's a package manager and it's for consumers, it's for producers, and it's a package repository. Uh, but it's not a workflow tool. Um, so if you're using something like Dato or there's, you know, there are a number of uh, tools out there, uh, Cider, Dato, um, and, and so on, Tatan doesn't force you into, into any particular workflow. Um, or, or any particular deployment mechanism. So, uh, so some of the benefits of uh, using Tatan, reproducibility, you know the exact version of each package that you're, actually, that you're running. It does all the dependency management for you. So, so dependencies are managed and tracked automatically. It resolves dependency conflicts. So let's say you've got two different packages uh, that each re rely on different uh, versions of a third package. Uh, Tatan will actually allow you to have both versions of that third package loaded and Foo gets the one it expects and Goo gets the one it expects. Uh, and also packages can have non-APL resources like shared libraries, HTML files, and so on. 
Uh, and so what I want to talk about today is dialogue's commitment. And we, we're, we're committed to supporting the community. And that means we're going to be publishing our packages on Tatan.dev. Uh, and we're going to be encouraging and helping others to do the same. Uh, it's also a question of completeness, and it's more than just the APL code. It's, it's including you know, good documentation that explains how to use packages, good training materials and examples, and of course, test suites to, to ensure the quality of the code. And then the other thing that I really need to work on is version discipline. So we're going to use semantic versioning and also create more timely releases so that when we do bump a version number, we're actually um, you know, publishing releases uh, that correspond to, to changes in, in the code. And uh, I guess that's it, time for questions. Hi, Brian, there's, um, there's two questions in the Q&A, one of which I believe you've dealt with and Morton is currently typing an answer to the other. Oh, Norbert's just asked, is Dialog planning on hosting a redundant server and create a versioning scheme? Um, I'll actually leave that one to Morton. Our initial plan, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Our initial plan is not to create our own server. Um, you know, uh, we, we don't really see the need to because we can publish to the Dialog group on the Teton server. Now, if there are compelling reasons for us to host our own, we'll certainly consider it, but, um, and in terms of a versioning scheme, well, a lot of our tools already have version numbers. So like I say, HTTP command is actually at version 4.0. And so it'll be difficult to, to reset that at this point. But I think from henceforward, um, we will, as I say, exercise much, uh, much more discipline in the way we do our version numbering on the tool side. 